Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I thought we'd delve into a bit more detail with uh, foliage in Unreal Engine because my original video was pretty much just the basics. I had to set up foliage, make materials and uh, paint them onto the world. But uh, there's a lot more to it than that and uh, some other things that we could play with. So I'm just here on my landscape map. I've got my colored fog post-processing just to, just to make things look really pretty and also to show off a little bit. And I've uh, got a few more foliage assets here, including a few different trees and uh, a couple more grass and uh, sort of lower to the ground foliage assets in a, in a new foliage texture pack and, and asset pack, which I'll put in a link down in the, in the description below. So when we get into the level here, we can see that it uh, runs really well. Collision set on the, on the bigger trees, but not on the smaller ones. Thought that was quite apropos. And uh, so let's, uh, let's have a look at it. So just uh, select your, your foliage instance here. And we'll go over to the foliage tab in our modes and I'll just tear this off so that we can see it. Just like that. So a few things to consider right off the bat. For one, if you're not getting uh, good looking shadows on your, on your landscape mesh when you build lighting, uh, just select, select the landscape and uh, over in the details tab, try and find the static lighting resolution and set this to a value higher than one. It will default to one, but higher values will produce better shadows at a, at a cost of your build time. So uh, that's something to keep in mind uh, going forward. And then in your world settings, if you find the static lighting level scale, if you set this figure to higher than one, it'll dramatically reduce your build times, again, at the expense of some of your shadow quality. Just things to think about if you're like, dealing with bigger levels and that kind of thing. Furthermore, if you're, on, if you're building something that's got like a gigantic landscape mesh and you wanna have lots and lots of foliage, like a big open world sort of level streaming setup, you can use more than one uh, foliage instance which will just, uh, just help you along for, for optimization, that kind of thing. So anyway, back to it. Let's click, uh, select our foliage instance, hit the foliage tab, and we'll have a look here. So I've just dragged in all of the foliage assets here. That's four trees, four grass assets. And as we handle them here, we can check and uncheck these little boxes up the, up the top here to choose which ones we, we use and which ones we leave out of our, of our painting. And we can select more than one, one or more, to. Uh, to deal with some, some other values here, including some, uh, some important things to consider, particularly like because we're, we're laying down trees as if they're foliage, uh, you might need to consider, so like if we select our trees here, the ones that we want to be standing straight up that grow directly out of the ground, come down here, find, uh, where is it? It's the angle. No, oh, I'm losing it. Where is it? Align max angle. This is the, the maximum angle in degrees that foliage instances will be adjusted away from the vertical. So that will avoid things like, like if you have a, a, hill, a hillside like this, it'll avoid the trees sort of sticking out on a, on a weird diagonal angle. It'll keep them sticking straight up and down, like, uh, like real trees do. Next thing is the light map resolution of your assets. So if we select all of them here, we can find the light map resolution and we can tweak it in the actual instance. Or if we open up one of our, one of our static meshes, we can change the light map resolution in the in the mesh settings. Tweaking these values will uh, that, that that was this will impact your uh, lighting build times, and uh, also improve the improve the shadows that that are casted by the uh, by the asset. Using a light map resolution that's higher than say like five twelve uh, will uh, will tax the engine a lot more. Will in increase the the performance cost of the scene that you're working on. Just something to keep in mind, again, at the expense of shadow quality. So if you want higher shadows, then your or higher quality shadows, your game is going to be performing worse on lower end systems. All these things just, uh, just to keep in mind when you're, when you're constructing your scene and when you're working on optimization. Furthermore, if we open up our tree here again, I've got uh, two different material elements, one for, the, one for the tree trunk and another for the, the leaves and branches just so that we have the, the sway on the, on the little branches here and the trunk itself doesn't move. And another, another point on lighting. So with our assets selected, we can also change whether, we can change the mobility of the item. So if we set them to static, they will have a static, uh, the static light map and therefore we'll have uh, built shadows like baked lighting. But if we set them to movable, they'll be entirely dynamic, which will be a little more taxing on the system, but can reduce the the, the cost of your of your light map render because uh, a common problem that people will have when they're when they're doing lighting builds with big foliage instances is that they'll get returns saying things like the uh, the light map resolution is too big on the particular instance and to consider reducing the number of the number of actual objects inside the instance 
So that's uh, another thing to keep in mind is the, the resolution of the light map, like the, the total light map, because all of these little objects inside your, your foliage instance are all going to be mapped to the same, uh, the same um, light map build, like the same built lighting texture. So you can reduce the, the amount of time that it takes to, to build the lighting and you can reduce the impact on the engine and avoid those pesky warnings just by uh, paying attention to, to the light map resolution of each instanced object. Then, okay, so in our uh, foliage tab here, so when you've got the brush open, you have your, your uh, foliage instance selected, we can click on this little button here, the select tool, and we can manipulate objects on a, uh, on a per instance basis. So we can select each piece individually and uh, manipulate them however we see fit, even rotating and that kind of thing. Uh, this is a handy tool because, for example, like we have a slope uh, like this, and you get these, like the, this type of thing here. I mean, you can either just uh, get your brush out and erase them, or you can come in here and spend some time uh, realigning all these little instances back in place, or manipulate them, you know, as you wish. So, if you want to have more trees or fewer trees in a particular area, you have this extra level of control. Furthermore, like you can use the the lasso tool and uh, bulk select individual objects within your instance pretty handy and uh yeah just offers some extra control for handling uh for handling your foliage your foliage instance so to recap uh, a couple things so if you notice yourself getting not good looking shadows on your on your landscape mesh i mean these are these are baked in pretty well but uh, you, you can get those pixel perfect shadows if you really wanted to with your production lighting build you know when you're ready to to package the game out and that kind of thing just find the static, uh, static lighting level scale in world settings that will uh, that will affect your shadow quality, or the static lighting resolution of your actual landscape mesh. I would avoid setting it any higher than eight, uh, similar to how big light maps are more taxing on the on, on the engine. Uh, a bigger lighting resolution will also have a, an impact on performance. And if you want to get a little bit more into optimization, we can head over here to this little button here that will say lit, no doubt. Head down to optimization view modes and hit shader complexity, which will uh, drastically change the look of your entire scene. But this will give you a good indicator of where the pressure is, where the, the, the really performance impacting uh, areas of your scene are. And as you can see by the bar at the bottom, green is good, red is bad, pink and white, really, really bad. And uh, the reason that we're seeing a lot of pink and white here at the moment is because all of these assets involve alpha in some way, they involve transparency. So for every pixel that the engine draws, as we can see in the uh, this little, uh, crosshair at the center of the screen there uh, may have to be drawn more than once if it's being viewed through a uh, transparent service like all of these all of these alpha cards for the leaves and branches and the uh, the grass down here at the bottom so the the more of this pink and white the more intensive it's going to be in the on the pc that's running your game in the end a little bit of white and pink is fine uh it shouldn't uh, shouldn't impact too much uh just uh yeah keep it in mind try and try and reduce the amount of of alpha that you're using just in a general way if you would like to to sort of spend some time, if you want to know how to, to properly wipe this out to get some really high performing uh, sort of landscape or sort of foliage assets, that kind of thing, just uh, don't use alpha. You could poly model each uh, foliage asset, and there will still be uh, you can still use the the simple grass wind on the on the mesh. So we'll just go back to the lit, just so that we can yeah get back to this. I hope this uh, I hope this helps you guys. I hope uh, we all learned a little bit more about foliage today. It's a very powerful tool, and I love the way that Unreal Engine does it. And uh, with just a, a little bit of know-how, you can really tweak things to, to come up roses. <laughs> All coming up Millhouse, you know what I mean? So yeah, if you wanted to if you wanted to manually fix things within your, your foliage your foliage instance, uh, then you can. You can affect each little, each little object on an individual basis to, to correct things like that, or even just, you know, delete individual objects within the within the instance if you like lots of things that you can do with foliage uh, lots of different ways that you can make it look and when you combine it with the multicolored fog that i made in one of my previous videos you can get some extremely extremely cool looking effects as a last word uh this foliage pack here that you're seeing i've uh, bundled it up and i've put it on gumroad for download it's only a couple bucks uh kicks kicks back to me so if you'd like to support the channel and support what i do uh please uh drop over to the link and uh, pick it up for yourself but uh, that's it for me for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Catch ya.